So let's let's go ahead. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Woo Stream, where we're bringing Willamette to you. My name is Eric Lasan, and I'm from Parent Engagement. We are glad you're with us for this evening's Parent and Family Forum. Before we get, begin, let me share a few logistical items. This session will operate much like a webinar. The microphone on your computer will not be active during this meeting. We also have Sayer Cohen, Assistant Director of Parent Engagement, with us to manage production this evening. Throughout our presentation, we'll monitor the Q&A tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen, so please submit your questions as you have them. You can also use the Q&A function if you're having technical difficulties, and Sayer or I will do our, our best to help. This evening's session will provide updates from athletics, we'll review fall sports, provide current updates on our winter sports, and look ahead to our spring season. We'll also highlight our students' academic achievements. And now let's begin. I'm excited to introduce our moderator for this evening, Rob Passage. Rob joined Willamette in August of 2012 as Director of Facilities and Operations. After a series of promotions, Rob has served as Director of Athletics since May of 2017. He previously served as Assistant Director of Athletics for Facilities and Events, as well as Head Men's Basketball Coach and Assistant Professor of Physical Education at Kalamazoo College in Michigan. And that was from 2002 to 2012. He graduated from Kalamazoo with a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics in 1993 and earned a master's in athletic administration from Western Michigan University in 1998. So welcome, Rob, and to the rest of the panelists. And now I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thanks, Eric. That was all a long, long time ago, right? Um, <laughs> waiting on when they say a half century ago, he graduated from Kalamazoo College, but uh uh, not not quite yet. So uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and allow our panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, we each uh, have a little bit of something we want to talk with you about this evening. We're going to take kind of a different part of, of our department, a different part of our student athletic experience and, and have them share uh, kind of what's been happening and, and what will happen. And so uh, we'll go in order of the folks on this list and I'll just let them uh, unmute and introduce themselves before we get moving forward. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm Leslie Shevlin. I'm the Associate Director of Athletics and Senior Woman Administrator for the department. I've been here about 14 years. The first nine, though, as our head men's women swimming coach. So transitioned into administration about five years ago. Uh, and again, really happy to have you. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Lubicic. I'm the head women's soccer coach here at Willamette. And I've just finished up my second season. Hello, thanks for being here. I'm um, Brett Franz. I'm the head women's triathlon coach here, um, and I'm in year 18 uh, at Willamette, and uh, uh, excited to be here. Hello, my name is Jordan Johnson. I am a economics major here at Willamette University. I'm also a senior on our softball team. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm Tenley. I am a third year. I am. It's also my third year on the track and field team. I do all the field events. Awesome. Well, that'll be a good group and you will enjoy, I promise, uh, hearing from those other folks uh, quite a bit more than me. So I will start uh, and give a little bit of uh, kind of overview. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, when we do this mid-year, we can talk about kind of what's happened in the fall. We can give some updates about what's happening right now. And we can talk about what's going to happen in the future. Uh, one of the things that we were sitting down and uh, kind of figuring out exactly what to talk about was that we had some challenges this fall and we wanted to make sure uh, it may have been for some of you may have gotten back to you from your students. Um, and, uh, you know, we wanted to talk about a few of those things and just kind of keep folks up to date on uh, kind of some things that, that have been happening. Uh, our response to it, which I think uh, went really well and, and kind of where we are as we go. And so um one of the things on campus uh, that you may have heard about is we have been up, uh, updating our boiler system throughout campus, a boiler system that not only heats the water uh, to our facilities, but also provides uh, building heat. Uh, that left our swim team in some pretty cold water at the beginning of their season. Um, happy to say the water is heated again, uh, but uh, there were some challenges there uh, around um, uh, when they first started their when they first started their season. 
Uh, and then also with the heat in our building, uh, once we, once it got cold here in late October, early November, our facilities team uh, rallied to the cause, uh, got a space series where we needed. We did provide our swim team with an off-campus location for a little while, um, and uh, and things are going going great now. But again, just one of those things, unexpected things we we uh, we had to deal with. Uh, we did have interruption for a little while. We had some challenges with our medical coverage this past fall. Ken Smith, who's our head athletic trainer. Um, had some medical challenges of his own. Uh, he was out for a couple months. Uh, and Dylan Borden, one of our other uh, ATCs, uh, left for another opportunity. And so uh, we had to fill in some gaps. And with the help of PT Northwest, uh, our local physical therapy group, uh, we were able to do that. And uh, that was great. At the same time that was happening, Hope Orthopedics, which is our team, uh, our group of team physicians, was bought out by Salem Hospital uh, here in town, which is great for them. But it offered some challenges for anybody that knows we really appreciated the the uh, kind of quick turnaround and the the care that a small clinic was able to provide and attention a small clinic was able to provide and then we ran into some uh, bureaucracy once they were under the the uh, uh, kind of the control of the larger entity but uh, that's all been worked out and things are going great and we're still getting the same great doctor coverage for those folks whenever something happens uh, that needs their attention. Uh, the other thing that we, we've been dealing with a little bit is coaching changes, and that's something that happens, uh, you know, in, in athletics across uh, all levels. Uh, we had to do a search for a new baseball coach uh, at the very beginning of the year. Uh, also just hired a new football coach. Uh, so Mike Caduto joined us for baseball and had his first practice just this last Monday. Um, Eric Williams joined us for football, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start spring practice in a few weeks. And then over the break, uh, our men's soccer coach, Sam Ailman, um, his fiance got a job in Boston at Boston College, and he now lives in Boston. So uh, we are uh, we are in the process of, of doing another search for uh, for a head coach in that program. We know that is a challenging thing for students and for students when they go through that. While we know they uh, choose Willamette for the academics and a lot of things that they, that they can offer outside of their sport, we also know there's a tremendous connection to the coach. Uh, and, and so, you know, Leslie and I and the rest of our staff uh, try to do these searches as, uh, you know, as quickly as we can. But we want to make sure that we're doing them properly and that we're involving folks. And we do involve uh, student athletes um, in that process. Uh, we have usually two student athletes involved directly in every search. Uh, and then the athletes are very involved once those uh, finalists come to campus. And so. Uh, for any soccer parents out there that are wondering what's happening, we have, I think, Leslie, as of today, 52 applicants for that position. And uh, we should uh, we should be going through uh, and starting those interviews uh, in, a, in a few weeks. Uh, so looking forward to that. And uh, you know, our goal is to have someone here in time for what their spring practice is. And uh, don't don't see any problem with, with getting that done. So that's a little bit just in terms of, you know, kind of some of the unexpected stuff that we weren't uh, – uh, we weren't planning on, but one of the things that works for us in athletics, if you've ever been a coach, you know, as you're involved in competition, the opponent's going to throw some things at you, you're going to have to deal with, and you need to be flexible and you need to be quick on your feet. And I think we've done a good job of, of managing, managing those things. Um, some results on the field and the court and the pool and those kind of things, as we've been, as we've been going through uh, this year, volleyball won the most games that they've had since 2015, the, the increased their win total for the second year in a row and, and was a member of the inaugural uh, was involved in the inaugural Northwest Conference tournament. Uh, so the first time the Northwest Conference has ever had a volleyball tournament. So that was exciting. And we're expecting continuing great things from them. Some other highlights, triathlon. Um, I think their coach might be the national coach of the year, but uh, he's uh, uh, he can talk more about that when we get to him next. Uh, but the team finished fifth, um, and we had an individual um, uh, participant, Reba, uh, uh, Riga, uh, finished uh, finished seventh nationally. So it was a fantastic result for triathlon. Uh, if you're following our, our winter sports, women's basketball at the turn, what we call it. So they played half the conference season. Uh, we're about ready to play the second half of the conference season. They sit tied for first place at seven and one. And so we're excited for the next uh, the next eight games in the basketball season. And uh, men's basketball is currently tied for third at five and three. Uh, and so excited also for uh, for what they've got going. Uh, and then swimming in a couple of weeks is going to head off to their, their conference championship. And they've had a lot of great individual results and in dual meets so far. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, to how they do here in a couple of weeks uh, when they get to the conference championship. And overall, um, again, just to talk about kind of some of the stuff that's happened this fall, we've had 20 uh, of our fall 
uh, student athletes received all conference recognition. And so uh, we've had some some teams do well, and we've also had some individual uh, athletes stand out in their in their program. So uh, been a good uh, been a good fall, been a good winter. Uh, we're excited for what we hope uh, will be a really great spring. I uh, would like it to stop raining uh, a little bit, but uh, I think it's going to do that, and we're going to have a, really have a great spring. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the national, the Division Three National Triathlon Coach of the Year to talk a little bit about the academic excellence. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, so because uh, some of the things uh, also that have come up uh, this year is the NCAA uh, made some adjustments to the playing season. And um, that's kind of one of the things that you might have heard your students say, you know, I'm practicing more than usual. Um, and, and that's true. And so uh, the new legislation, just to kind of give you a brief kind of overview of it, um, in general, in the past, we were given just a number of weeks that we could practice during the year. And so what's kind of changed from that is a little different for each uh, each season of sports, but for the fall sports, uh, we kind of have a predetermined start and end date, um, and that's kind of what is called our traditional season. Um, and then now we have a non-traditional season that includes up to 24 days in the spring that we can practice, um, but it's no more than four days a week, so it's still kind of not as uh, impactful uh, to, to your students' kind of time. Uh, similar in the spring, uh, except everything's kind of flipped a little bit um, with the one difference being you can use a little bit of your 24 days um, kind of closer to your traditional time in the spring. Um, for our winter sports, they're a little bit different. Um, they get 114 days for the year, uh, and except for indoor and outdoor track, they get 144. Um, and so they get to use those kind of from the first day of class until their season ends. Um, and then in for period sports, which for us means golf and tennis, um, they don't have a non-traditional. They just have a traditional season. And that's um, – they have a fall traditional and a spring traditional. And it's kind of split. And so they get to split those 114 days. Um, and so kind of with those changes, I um, mean, if you want more in-depth knowledge about that, Leslie Shedlin loves to talk about playing seasons. Um, but kind of how does that impact? the school um, and kind of their classwork and, and everything they do. Um, we've been as strong as ever. So this fall, you know, 16 of the 20 programs were above a 3-3. Three, three. Um, six of those teams were above a 3-5-2. Uh, and then we had 42 student athletes with a 4.0, uh, 188 student athletes that were above a 3-5. Um, and so there's still really good things happening academically. Um, this year, uh, Sigma Alpha Chi is a, a kind of it recognizes student athletes who excel in sports and the classroom. And so this year, uh, we'll be inducting 41 or 42 new members. Um, and these inductees have finished five semesters uh, in school and, and have above a three, four kilo GPA. So still lots of really good things happening. Um, just recently, my team got some, some good academic recognition, uh, a couple of Scholar All-Americans and a couple of honorable mention um, and then a team award. So uh, still really good things happening. A little bit of change to the practice schedule um, and how that's done. But coaches, it gives them a little bit more um, ability to uh, kind of make sure that we're not uh, overdoing it on the athletic side um, and being kind of pressured into certain weeks. We're able to spread things out a little bit more in our off season and, and help our student athletes. So, um, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Lisa. Thanks, Brett. Um, I was asked to talk tonight and just sort of talk about some of my experience that I've had here in my, my first two um, seasons since I'm fairly new, although with the new coaches, I'm now going to become a little bit more of a veteran here. Um, the one thing that really drew me to Willamette and the one thing that has really stood out as um, I progressed through these first two seasons has been the support that has been given to our student athletes, to our coaches um, and really all around campus. And that's the one thing that, you know, when I was asked about this, it came to like, it was very at the top of my list. Um, our student support, just the support of one another. So you will see a lot at our athletic events that our crowd consists a lot of other student athletes. And our teams will go from one, you know, go as a group to support other student athletes. 
Um, I think part of that is they understand what it means to be a student athlete here at Willamette. Um, they like to celebrate that with their or with their other student athletes. Um, but also these are people that they see in the classrooms and they see in the dorms and they have relationships with outside of just athletics. And it's important to them to continue to support them in all that they're doing. We have a lot of different committees and groups on campus that will host events that help to recognize, celebrate, um, and give some visibility to our sports so that they'll have their events in conjunction with home matches to try to increase the attendance and to see the other groups on campus supporting our student athletes. So it's just not our student athletes and student athletes is really something that I've appreciated. And when I go to other sports, I love to just see the amount of other student athletes and just amount of students that really come um, to cheer on our, our student athletes here. Um, the staff support that we get as well is you'll often see other coaches, head coaches, assistant coaches, administrators who don't have to be there that day coming to support the student athletes and the coaching staff. Um, the one thing I really like is we'll see each other in the hallways. Um, the amount of encouragement that we give with one another of just hearing somebody tell you good job after the weekend, comment on one of the student athletes. It's really just nice to know that it isn't just saying that we're a community and a family, and it really is a practice of being a community and a, fa and a, and a family. Um, and then the support that we get from the other community of Willamette, which is our faculty and our staff, people outside of athletics who interact with our student athletes in a way that the coaches don't. And we'll see a lot of people from admissions, we'll see professors at games because they want to support their student athlete in all that they're doing. But also the one thing that really has stuck out here is the relationships that the people on campus build with our students and that they sincerely want to see how they're performing and how they're doing and to give them that additional support in all that they're doing. Where I've had people from admissions come to our games and they want to see that student athlete that they read their essay and they want to see how they're performing now. And they really appreciate the time and energy that they put into their sports and them just showing it up and being present and, support, and supporting our student athletes. That little bit goes a long way. And, you know, even as us coaches getting notes sometimes from other people on campus, who you don't realize we're at your game, just telling you a good job on the weekend. It really creates a great community within athletics, within our student athletes, but really within our Willamette community. And that's something I'm sure you guys have heard about a lot, but it really does go into practice here. And the one thing I've always appreciated since the first day I got on campus is when anyone has said, if you ever need help, if you have anything you ever need, please let me know. And everyone has been so sincere in putting that out there and following it up. Um, so those are the things that really the support that we're getting all throughout our, our community is really what has stood out in my first two um, seasons here at Willamette and something that I appreciate and then hope to continue to foster. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, I get to talk about the most fun part, I think, our student athletes and kind of what they're doing in addition to their sport, but not only that, uh, to support each other kind of internally uh, within the department. So I am lucky to be one of the co-advisors of our student athlete advisory committee. And I wanted to share some of this stuff with you all tonight. So you kind of know one, what some of your students may be doing already. And two, what some of your students may be able to do if they're not yet utilizing some of the programming or some of the things that we're offering. So we have a student athlete advisory committee or SEC. Uh, Jordan and Tenley, as you can see, are two members of our executive board. That's how they got um, voluntold to do this this evening. Uh, but SAC, we meet bi-monthly. Our executive uh, board meets in the weeks that the full group doesn't meet. We share important departmental and institutional information. We get feedback from them and allow them to have some like some blocked out time to share their voice and feedback around things that are going on in the department or the conference or the institution, things that directly affect their experience. Uh, and then we create opportunities for the student athletes. And when I mean me, 
pretty much is the student athletes and our executive board in this group creating opportunities for our student athlete community to find connection, to find belonging, and to get out into, into the community and that kind of thing. Uh, some of the Hallmark pro pro programs, and so some things that we kind of do yearly or will begin to do yearly. Uh, we did a winter social this year. Again, that is our SAC Executive Board uh, Born and Bred program, and they put together a social this year. The idea was a genius idea, if I do say so. It was not mine. It was theirs, but we did a gingerbread house competition. So every team was represented this year in our winter social. We had over 150 student athletes participate. Uh, and they we had pizza and they got to as teams build gingerbread houses and then we had an Instagram uh, contest afterwards and men's and women's golf congratulations to men's and women's golf for winning our inaugural gingerbread house competition uh, but it was a really fun time to just kind of kick back before finals but also continue that kind of competition and, and work together as student athletes they're best at uh, based on feedback from our student athletes wanting to do a little bit more in the nutrition space. So we brought in Shira Evans, who is a former student athlete at a Division three school in New York, Ithaca College, now have a, has a private practice down in Eugene. Uh, and Shira did a, a three sessions with our student athletes this fall. Some of the topics were fueling for optimal performance or allies for all bodies. So around fostering positive relationships with food and body image and exercise. Uh, so some of the programming that Shira has done, and we want to continue to partner partnering with Shira to be able to provide our student athletes with some of that information. Uh, she also had a meeting with our dining services and our chef to really kind of hone in on what kind of food we want to be providing our student athletes and really, you know, healthy, uh, simple food that that supports all the students on campus. So that's been another great partnership with Shira. Um, lastly, in our Hallmark programs, our professional development series, I believe it's our 12th annual, will be coming up this year in a couple of months on March 4th. Uh, we'll have a couple of pre-workshops around LinkedIn, building your LinkedIn profile and uh, how to prepare for interviews and that kind of thing. And then we'll have an evening. Uh, in the past, we've had 20 plus alumni and community members that come on campus and the student athletes will have the opportunity to network with these folks, uh, talk resumes, share, share experiences around kind of how to share your student athlete experience an interview process or in a cover letter are all things that are coming up here real soon. Uh, and then lastly, a couple of kind of really important upcoming programming soon that are that's different. These things change every year, but Special Olympics is doing a polar plunge in a couple of weeks. I know women's soccer is leading the effort there to volunteer. So we're really excited to, to partner with Special Olympics on that. Good for a Girl is a book by Lauren Fleshman. Uh, she talks about her personal story, but also as an advocate for a transformative shift in uh, intercollegiate athletics. So we got books and they offered if you if you have a certain number of books, then you can Zoom with Lauren. So we're starting a book club here in a couple of weeks with folks who want to opt into that. And then we're, they're going to get to meet and have a Zoom with Lauren, the author, uh, in a couple of in a couple of months. And then lastly, Division Three Week is coming up. And Tenley or Jordan could talk even more about that. But Division Three is really a week where we celebrate the student athlete identity and the fact that they're more than an athlete uh, in addition to, to all the other things that they're doing. So D3 week will be a week of celebration, a week of service uh, and a week of really celebrating what it means to be a student athlete. So I appreciate your time. And I think now I'm kicking it over to Jordan to tell you even more about the awesome things our student athletes are doing or really opportunities that, that they have. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the NCAA Immersion Program. Um, basically, this is a program that I attended uh, in the first week of January. And a little bit about me before. Um, I am a senior, so I'm graduating in this coming May. And I'm planning on getting my master's in sports administration or sports management. And with that, I would like to go into any type of management position in the athletic area. So um, because this is what I've wanted to do, I was able to attend this program. And basically, um, when we attended, we were exposed to everything Division Three. Um, we got to see all of the members and its governance process. So we spent a lot of time um, going over issues that Division Three is facing 
you know, countrywide that, um, and we got to see, you know, like the voting process, we got to see the governing boards um, and all of that. And kind of, I was kind of able to dip my toes in and, you know, like be involved and see like, is this really what I want to do? If it is, you know, like this was an amazing experience for me. And, you know, it kind of showed, I mean, Leslie was also there as well. So it kind of shows like what people in her position have done and what they do yearly at the NCAA convention. Um, so basically after this, um, conv or after this program that I attended, I now have the opportunity to attend the career and sports forum. Um, this is also another program, but this one is an annual program that brings together about 200 NCAA student athletes to learn um, just more about the potential careers in sports um, and most particularly college athletics. Um, it's a three day forum and it kind of just helps students start to chart their career path. And there's a ton of networking in both the immersion program and the career in sports forum. Um, so you're networking with current athletics professionals, which I did a ton in the, in the beginning of January. Um, I kind of wanted to just show this a little bit, but like this is a little booklet that we got while we were there you can't read it apparently for some reason but we got this entire booklet and basically on the inside we have you know lists of our mentors we were all given a mentor and um we made connections with more than just our mentors and we have all of their information to continue these relationships with them and i can only imagine that the career and sports forum will be the same um in terms of just networking and you know like learning your own personal strengths as you are growing up and coming into, you know, like what you, who you are and what you want to do. And um, if you want to be a part of the athletic administration world, um, there's also following this program, there's also another program um, that's called the postgraduate internship program through the NCAA. Um, I also attended the immersion program with Josh Perez, and he is actually going to be a part of the postgraduate internship program. Um, so it's an internship in um, Indianapolis, which is where the headquarters of the NCAA are. So basically, they only give out 34 or there's only 34 positions in 14 different different departments spread across the NCAA. But it's an internship where you get to work as close as you could possibly get with the NCAA. You are fully immersed in it. You are you would live in India, Indianapolis. Um, it's honestly just a great way to start your career, but it's also, I am very lucky that um, I've been able to attend these programs and that these are things that I've decided to do because it's kind of showing all of the opportunities that you can have as um, you're going into, you know, just as I'm navigating like my experience in my life after college. Um, so this is one option for me that I will look into, but um I just, yeah, I just wanted to talk about like all of the opportunities that lie within being a student athlete at Willamette and especially being involved with SAC. I've had a lot of opportunities to make connections with people just outside of the athlete world in Willamette. You know, like we have partnered with different people to do different things and, um, it has helped my professional development a lot. Everything that I've done has helped me a ton. And, um, I do think that if this is something that anybody is interested in, I would promote it any, any day. So if anyone has any like specific questions, I would love to talk about it, but yeah, that's all for me. Why'd you choose that photo? <laughs> uh, okay. Hi, I'm Tenley. Uh, I am a track and field athlete, obviously, from the photo. Um, I am also a public health uh, major, which is like kind of important to the things that I do. Um, 
And some of the things that I have been doing and I'm involved in are revolve around mental health, which is a massive passion of mine. And coming to Willamette has opened up a lot of opportunities to um, social network with people with um, within the mental health field. Um, and I got involved with JED around my sophomore year, which is a foundation um, that works with like nationwide with campuses um, that help them with outreach um, and administration level um, mental health policies and legislation and things that they can do to be active about mental health on their campus. And I have always been passionate about mental health because me myself, like I have struggled with anxiety and performance being an athlete and the, the stress that comes with being a student athlete. Um, having to juggle, you know, being a student and keeping your grades up to then also really achieving um, excellence on the field. And so it's given me a lot of skills that I will be taking into my future um, that has like hard work, but also it comes with its own stress and it comes with a lot of um, anxiety and pressure. And so I really wanted to get involved especially because Willamette offers such an ability to really figure out what you're passionate with and then connect with people to make something happen and to do something and to take action. And I was part of Jed who did a survey around my first year of college where they did a whole campus-wide uh, mental health survey. And I got to be a part of looking at that and analyzing the data that we got back and then Looking at an administration level, um, as a student rep, I work with tons of administration and staff and professors that are all on this board that we come together like every month and talk about what's currently what we're going to do, how are we going to reach out to the student body, how are we going to change things like policy wise at Willamette to help um, give more access to mental health resources, connect people with off-campus resources to support students that are coming back onto campus um, that need more extra support. And so it's been a really great learning experience to be a part of that and to be kind of have be able to be a voice at a table with in my and like these adults that are very educated and have tons of degrees and being able to get to talk to them and kind of say my opinion has been a really great um, opportunity. And because of that, I really it kind of sparked like a, like a light bulb in my head of like, well, I'm part of a community uh, which is athletics and that, you know, there's especially now in the recent years, more and more talk about mental health in sports has become uh, a topic of discussion. And, um, but it needs to keep on happening. And it's still very the ideas of what we can do to help at people, especially to help athletes, is still very vague. And the research to support those things are still very, um, there needs to be more elaboration on it. And there still needs to be more discovery and, and data and research. And so I went to Leslie and I was like, hey, I'm passionate about mental health. I'm passionate about doing these things. Um, and I want to be able to kind of do a survey of my own to help um, look at the student athlete population and the mental health um, needs that are needing to be met. And so with the help as this is my kind of my thesis work for my exit out of um, during my senior year, this will be like kind of like my exit out um, is uh, creating this survey for um, mental health uh, that is asking from a range of all different questions that kind of really looks on the why, like why might a student be struggling or why do they feel overwhelmed or why do they feel stressed and kind of going through that data and to um, look at, at it more from a perspective of a student athlete myself and then the perspective of my professors that and everything that are helping me with that. And hopefully all this research that I will be doing will help then I can create, um, I can give results to then to coaches and then to administration and at, in the athletic department and to professors to help kind of create more opportunities, create more, um, to create more um, opportunities and more outreach for students and to help support them. Um, and it's and with that, I've also worked with the Ren Gen Center, which is the Office of in, uh, Inter in, Inter uh, 
intercultural engagement and inclusion. I am a program assistant there where I am helping connect um, that office to the athletic uh, office and to help create more of a community for student athletes of color. For someone that's a person of color myself, like I, um, it's hard to get to those um, infinity groups that you can find more people within your own identity there because, you know, I do sports. I, my practices go long. And so I wanted to create a group that all student athletes of color can kind of come together and find community and make friendships and build bonds that can come outside of not just being an athlete and to focus on those identities and a lot with my I'm also on the SAC exec board I've been doing a lot with Leslie of how do we celebrate these how do we embrace and how do we take pride in our identities and so I hope that with all this work that I'm doing I'm helping you know advocate for students and advocate for my peers and to help create more help and support for one another and figuring out you know like is you know what more can we do? What more can other resources can we provide? And because of SAC and um, all the amazing like professors and staff at Willamette, it's been an amazing opportunity to do so. And hopefully further on, um, we can continue to build those um, relationships and social networking to help connect more people to more resources. Um, so yeah, so that's currently what I've been doing. <laughs> and um, with the support of our lovely athletic department and everything and their support with me has been a really great opportunity to get involved and has also pushed me to then look more into going into the into the NCA world and look in there uh, as a career opportunity um, for after college. And so it's been great that um, Leslie, Rob, and a lot of other people have been um, connecting me with those opportunities. And so I'm really thankful. All right. Thanks so much, Jordan and Tenley. And even before we get to this, um, and we, I just want to go through just for folks a, a little bit about some of the, the things you may experience uh, in terms of coming to our games, watching them from home, those kind of things. I, I do want to thank especially our students for um, for sharing those. Um, I'm constantly amazed, as I'm guessing the folks who are parents on this call are also at, at what our students do, uh, what they're involved in and, and what they're able to accomplish. Uh, you know, our coaches um, and Leslie and myself are, are here to, to try to, uh, you know, help make that happen and, and try to make sure that we are exposing folks to the opportunities uh, like Jordan's had. So we'll we'll sit, we'll we'll send stuff out to coaches and students to say, hey, there's this internship, there's this scholarship, there's these things. Please be involved. Um, and we love it uh, when folks like Tenley come to us and say, hey, I have this idea. I want to do this. Uh, you know, we want to see if we can make that happen because um, that's how change happens, right? And, and I'm really excited as she started to begin to share some of the, the information she's gotten back from the mental health survey with her student athletes for us to be able to use that, to be able to support our students better. So I, I'm thankful um, not only for Jordan and Tenley, but for all our student athletes and their, their engagement in what we're doing. So thank you all for that. Um, on to the, the next stuff, and then I know we do have some questions we want to get to. Um, just wanted to provide some, some information. So uh, this was kind of last year also. We started doing digital tickets um, for the sports that you can see here. So all of our tickets uh, are digital now. We don't take any cash on campus. Um, the good news is for our folks, we don't charge you. Your student, if you're involved in one of these sports, should have a passcode that they can give you to give you free tickets. And so you won't have to pay, but just a heads up that uh, – we are completely digital uh, as we as we move through tickets this year. Can't remember what the next which what we go to on the next slide. Um, uh, we also have a Bearcat app, um, and so this is for students around. It's not just students actually; it's anybody on campus. You can download the Bearcat app, check in at events, um, turn it in for different prizes. Uh, we also that this last year started having a Bearcat of the month, and so the student that goes to the most most events. Uh, and gets uh, gets the most points, gets a reserved parking space uh, here on campus. Not a big deal a few years ago um, when we were you know coming just coming out of COVID. But I think uh, anybody on this call can explain to you how valuable a uh, a, a parking space can be uh, on the busier days on campus. So that's been a big hit. Uh, we've had 812 different users. Um, the cool thing for me, I can get I'll get updates if I'm not able to go to a game or there's something on my on on. Uh, on the road, uh, I get updates through the app uh, at every quarter of a basketball game, every half of a, a quarter of a football game, um, you know, uh, after every inning of softball and baseball. So it's a way to keep up uh, on what's on what's happening uh, with our teams. So 
And then the other way to keep up with what's happening on our teams, and again, you can see here on the on the left the list of things we do try to webcast as many events as we possibly can. Um, and you can see tennis, we can only do it outdoors because we don't own our indoor facility. And then track and field, it, it comes out to when, when it's possible and we can manage uh, the, the size of the event. Uh, but I think for those of you that, that watch, we we do an outstanding job on our, our webcast. Uh, a lot of that credit goes to Chris Sabato, uh, who's our associate or assistant AD for media. Um, and uh, just go, you, you go to our website, you should be able to click on, there'll be a little video link on the schedule page. You should be able to click on that. Um, and, uh, uh, take you right to that, uh, right to that page. We do not charge right now for our, uh, to watch our games. There are some opponents that do that, but we want to make sure that, uh, folks can watch our student athletes, uh, if they're not able to get here to our games. So. All right. Well, thanks again, um, for, to all the panelists for sharing all that information. And, uh, as Rob noted, there's, there's been, some questions coming in and, and Rob, I'll kind of summarize the questions and then you can decide if you want to speak to the, to the question or if you want to, you know. Uh, yeah. If you don't, Eric, I'll, I'll, I'll go through those if you don't mind. Um, Cause I think I can, I can maybe speak to a few uh, just directly. I do know we had one uh, a, a little bit about kind of academic support, um, you know, working with professors for kind of our policy around um, Miss class and what that might be. So I was going to have Leslie talk, uh, on on that a little bit and just kind of talk overall with uh, the maybe the care assist, care report system here at Willamette how we how we try to help support the students whenever we get um, you know information that may be struggling and how our faculty athletic reps um, can really be that liaison between uh, our office you know our department and, and the faculty. Yeah, I appreciate that. I yeah. So just to give everyone a little bit of an overview, uh, a couple of the mechanisms that we have in place around student support. Um, again, like challenges with boilers and that kind of thing, we have challenges in other spaces as well. Um, have hired a new director of student success who's managing tutoring and um, student academic support and that kind of thing. And, and right now are in the midst of hiring an assistant director of that office. So what we are able to do together to support all of our students, including our student athletes, is going to increase here in the next couple of months. Um, a couple of of ways that we try to kind of work together. We do have a care report system that Rob mentioned. And so that can be a, a myriad of, of care or concerns that folks have for students. Faculty submit uh, care reports specifically called academic alerts. And so those come through me and to another, to a committee that I'm on so that we can better support our student athletes. And as you can expect, a lot of the first touch points is going to be me talking to coach as a way to work together with a student athlete to be able to support um, and figure out what it is that they need. Um, one of the other things is working with our faculty athletic reps, as Rob mentioned. We've been engaging in more conversations with them as of late, as well as other faculties around things like our missed class time or missed class letters that right now are coming from student athletes to, to faculty around when they're going to miss class. We are in the process of trying to streamline that to make it better for student athletes, better for faculty, more clear, more real time. So, for example, when student athletes uh, make the postseason, that's not necessarily in the missed class letter that goes out at the beginning of the season. So we're trying to make a more real time missed class letter where we can help the student athletes. It is their responsibility by and large, but we are trying to help them to alert their faculty when things come up and they got to start packing and start adjusting and get ready for that postseason uh, or when there are travel changes. So those are some new developments that we're working on right now. We've done that with our grade checks. Our grade checks are automated. We go through Google um, and, and, and coaches are supposed to be having conversations with student athletes around difficult grade checks and positive uh, affirmative grade checks. So we are trying to work on that with our missed class letter is our next step and our faculty athletic reps and the faculty that we work with are helping to advise that. And then lastly, the faculty athletic reps really help us when we have difficult situations around maybe what their advice around what might be best for a student athlete as it relates to their course load or their uh, progress towards degree. Every student is going to be a little bit different and every um, student shouldn't be or needs to be carrying 18 credit hours every semester or um, some may need to at certain parts of the year take a little bit less to be able to 
what we're working with is really trying to make sure they're progressing in their degree and preserving that GPA. While not the most important thing, I don't think um, their overall health and well-being being the most important, but that GPA is what can prevent them from participating in their sports. So that's what we're trying to work together to make sure we're figuring out how they're progressing, how they're learning and and going through their education, and then also just making sure that they're able to participate in their sports or all the things we're constantly trying to kind of juggle. Thanks, Leslie. I appreciate that. And I I think Leslie does a fantastic job of working with our coaches uh, to help support uh, you know, the the academic success of our students too. I think our role is not, and, and everybody knows, don't come to me if you want help with calculus, but I can point you in the right direction of someone that actually does know what they're doing. Um, another question that came in um, was about transfer, uh, uh, folks transferring. And uh, uh, I kind of want to address that. I think one of the, so it's I'm surprised so many of my students, teammates are looking to transfer. Can you provide data on the transfer rate for student athletes um, and kind of how it compares here uh, from athletes to to non-athletes, um, and it's interesting. I mean, I think for those of you that are paying attention to you know college athletics as a whole, the transfer portal is a big thing. Um, and um, I get a lot of questions on how it's impacted us. And I think if you look actually over the last few years, it's, it's impacted us favorably. Uh, I think the number of transfers that have come into our programs is actually higher than the number of folks that have left uh, over the last few years. Um, but uh, it has created more of a... Uh, more of a curiosity, actually. And so um, I would say we had some athletes last year in the, in the late spring that entered the transfer portal. That doesn't mean they're tr- they're leaving. What it means is they're putting their name out there and they're seeing if anybody wants to, to come after them. Uh, they're seeing a lot of times, is there anyone at division one who wants to give me a scholarship? Is there anyone, you know, at another division that wants to, you know, that wants to, to give me a scholarship? Um, there are a lot and Leslie could, Leslie handles all of our transfers and she might be able to give a little bit more context to it. Um, but there are a lot of folks that end up actually coming back and saying, you know what? I, I actually, as I've given up more thought, I want to stay, I want to pull my name out. Um, and, and I'm hopeful. I think I might know the, who, who wrote the question. I think I might know the sport you're talking about. Um, and, uh, um, I'm anticipating in that situation that we're going to have, you know, I'm hoping that we're going to have a lot of those folks stay. Um, uh, but I think they're out there just seeing what might be possible. And it's just easier now with the transfer portal for that to happen. Um, it doesn't mean they're going to leave. Uh, it means that they're just, they're just out there, out there testing. And Leslie may have the numbers. I know we looked at the numbers nationally, um, especially for the sports of soccer. There were like, something like 2,800 people across all divisions that were student athletes that were in the transfer portal, uh, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And, and all the, of all the sports we looked at um, just, and this is what the data, I'd have to look up that specific data, but I do recall that the data shows that um, of, of men's basketball, men's women's basketball, men's women's soccer, men's women's track and field and men's women's swimming that we looked at the male sports were all double almost double, double or almost double the amount of folks that were in the transfer portal. Um, so more men than women. And then at division three, uh, specifically the port, the sports of the sport of men's soccer and men's basketball um, were even higher than the division one and the division two transfer portal folks that were in at, at any given time uh, when we looked at the data late in the fall. So just so you all know too, I do have conversations when anyone wants to go into the portal. Um, I have conversations to make sure that they know like their rights in the process. They know that if they go in, there's no penalty for being removed. They know that um, coaches, that their coaches can't go in and see uh, if they're in the portal. They have a lot of autonomy uh, as it relates to going into the portal and transferring because division three wants them to be able to have that. Um, and I have a conversation about why just checking in in case there's anything they didn't want to share with their coach to make sure that if we need to know, we need to know. And Rob is right. Um, 95% of the conversations I've had, folks have said when I was getting recruited here, I was getting recruited division one. And, um, this has been a wonderful experience. I just want to see what's out there. Um, and in the last six months, we've only had one, um, matriculate to a a different institution and it was a division one institution. So. Uh, 
I have I have something else here that's not really a question. It's just uh, Tenley's mom thanking us for this informative Is session. It really? <laughs> and I want to take a chance, if you're still on there, to say thank you for sending your daughter to Wyman. Um, and uh, so... But any other questions for folks? Yeah, last folks. last uh, last chance for questions. And if uh, if we don't have any additional questions come in, Rob, maybe you can just provide some final thoughts or anything, any takeaways, any last takeaways you want our audience to have tonight and those who might watch this recording uh, at a later time. Yeah, I think, and, and maybe on the next page, I think we might have my contact information and Leslie's, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing uh, is if, if folks do have questions or you have concerns, we we can't share, you know, um, students' academic records and those kind of things. We're not going to be the ones to talk about playing time and neither are our coaches. But if you have concerns or anything that you have questions about, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, to reach out to Leslie. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just kind of directly. Uh, I, I don't, uh, uh, you know, we are, we are here to help your students succeed. Um, and that is, uh, that's our goal. And one of the reasons I came here 12 years ago is that when I interviewed, I felt that from everyone I came into contact with. And, um, you know, if we're not doing something right, um, you know, if we're missing uh, somewhere, then, uh, you know, we wanna know about it and we wanna try to make it better. And so uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and uh, and let us know. It looks like we did get a question that came in about athletes who are practicing um, on their own. Rob, do you see that one? I did see that one. Yep. And and I saw Riga's mom is on here and I apologize that I messed up your daughter's name uh, at the very beginning. I feel awful about that. And so, um, but uh, the question is, if athletes are practicing on their own without coaches, are there opportunities for, for them to work? Uh, with trainers to prevent injuries. And so our um, for our athletic training room, so with our four athletic trainers, their priority is in-season teams, right? So they're going to be at practices. They're going to be managing those in-season teams. But anyone, any of our student athletes outside of season can go and get treatment for injuries. They can go and have a conversation um, and uh, and talk with the athletic trainers about whether it's prevention or or rehab, whatever that may be. Uh, one thing we are we are working on and we currently do not have is a strength and conditioning coach. So right now our programs are all kind of uh, managing that in their own way. Um, uh, but we are working on getting someone that actually then can, can work with our student athletes in that capacity uh, year round uh, in addition to our, our certified athletic trainers. Awesome. All right. Well, I think uh, barring any additional questions, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. So I just want to thank our panelists. You all, you are a fantastic uh, panel this evening. Thanks for providing these updates for athletics and giving the multiple perspectives that you all were able to, to provide for our audience. And hopefully our audience found all this information valuable. And, uh, and again, when, when you're, if you're watching the recording later, uh, please feel free to be in touch with us. Um, as needed to, for, for any follow-ups. And so thanks again for this evening, and we hope you'll join us for our next forum scheduled for February 21st. And we'll be providing an overview of graduate and dual degree programs across all of our schools at Willamette University during that session. So if you can make it for that, um, we'd be happy to, to share a lot more. Um, so thanks a bunch and take care, everyone.